Hello and welcome to the Vaults of Terror. My name is Ed and today we're going to be continuing our overview videos with a look at the Orcs. Now this is a very requested video as there are a lot of Orc fanatics out there, so I hope this overview will give you an image as to who the Orcs are, especially if you're quite new to the hobby. The Orcs are a crude and highly aggressive green-skinned Xenos race. Orcs are also the dominant subspecies of the Orcoids, which include smaller species such as Gretchens and Snotlings. They are a very primitive species, but they are also one of the most successful. Due to their aggressive nature, the race is split into thousands of tiny empires spread over the entire galaxy due to their warlike ways. If they united as one force, they would be a power that would be hard to stop even by the Imperium. Now it is agreed that the Orcs were genetically engineered millennia ago. Orc legend attributes their creation to the Brain Boys, a small but intelligent subspecies of Orc. Later evidence establishes that the Orc races may have been created by the Old Ones, who are described as creating the Krork as part of a last ditch attempt to fight off their enemies such as the Necrons and the Enslavers. Now humanity and the Orcs have fought innumerable conflicts since humanity first reached the stars, and are unlikely to ever stop. It's possible that the reason that the Space Marines were created was to fight this race, as they were one of the only major Xenos threats at the time of the Great Crusade, prior to the rise of Chaos and the Necrons and Tyranids and all the other Xenos races that we now know of in the 41st millennium. This is surmised because the armour that is built up around the Space Marine is designed to be as tough as Orc hide, and the bolters used by Space Marines are also designed to do maximum damage to fleshy targets, such as the Orcs. Now the physiology of Orcoids, which includes Gretchens, Snotlings, Squigs and Orcish Fungus alongside the Orcs, is unusual. Now it's believed Orcs can grow throughout their lives, and that growth is directly tied to social standing. The largest Orc is usually the most dominant in an entire clan. Now the Orc physiology is very strange because they're actually a symbiotic combination of animal and fungus. Now each augments the operation of the other to work together in this being. This means that an individual orc is incredibly resilient and the fungus within their body has replaced several vital organs and actually influences their reproduction as well. As you may or may not know, orcs and other orcoids are actually asexual, which means they're neither male nor female. Adult orcs are actually constantly releasing spores which lie in the ground, often for years, waiting to grow and develop into orcs or gretchens. Thus, a world invaded by orcs will be troubled by them for hundreds of years to come, even if they drive off the invasion, as feral orcs will begin cropping up in the remote areas of the world, and any planet that does not set out to purge the spores immediately will inevitably come under attack in a few generations from another Xenos threat of orcs. Now, the society of the orcs is that you'd expect from a tough warlike species. They were engineered to be tough. They are muscular and aggressive and very primitive minded. In addition to their warriors, which is the most popular group within the orc species, gatherings of orcs are naturally divided into castes of odd boys, who are genetically predisposed to perform specific tasks exceedingly well, with specialties and information coded directly into their DNA, removing the need for training and replacing it with a level of instinct that allows them to perform many operations without really understanding how or why. For example, a mech boy understands the mechanical principles at an instinctive level and can build the mad contraptions of the orcs without ever needing to sit down and spend 20 years learning such engineering techniques. Now the largest common orc social unit is a tribe, a horde usually comprised of numerous warbands and under the command of a warlord or a warboss. A warband is a smaller group, usually led by one individual warboss, and warbands are in turn comprised of various mobs, that's spelled with a Z. Groups of orcs band together as social and fighting units, often grouped together by their preferred fighting style. In addition to having a tribe, an orc will also have a clan. Now, orc tribes change all the time, but clans are stable and enduring parts of orc society. Orc clans are not communities, but rather philosophical ideals, representing the various aspects of the orcish character, and tied into an appearance or combat style. Now, clan affiliation may be a genetic phenomena, as members of the same clan may have physical characteristics in common, such as being very large, or gaining a large number of teeth, which will be important when I mention them later, or having some predisposition towards a physical characteristic. Now, orc tribe usually contains orcs from many different clans, so when tribes fight each other, orcs will often tend to find themselves in combat with foes from the same clan, although they hold no loyalty in that regard, and will happily butcher orcs from the same clan in the name of the Wa. Although it has been stated that there are probably many orc clans beyond those known by humanity, there are six truly significant ones to mention. 
Now the first is the Bad Moons. Now this is the richest clan because their teeth grow quicker than any other clan. I'll explain why that's important later. Now the Bad Moons are the closest thing orcs also have to a merchant class and usually will be the ones trading other items to and from orcs for teeth. Now the Blood Axe clan is distrusted by other clans because the Blood Axes make use of un orky tactics such as camouflage and battle plans. Such a crazy idea I know. Now the Death Skulls are famed looters and scavengers so these are ones who you'll see on the battlefield generally picking over the remains after a fight is inevitably won. Now the Evil Sons clan epitomise the orcish love of vehicles that go fast and make a lot of noise. They have a high proportion of what are known as speed freaks, orcs who prefer to drive vehicles or fly their aerial vehicles, although god knows how these things stay in the air. Now the Goths clan are close combat specialists, which in a race which is all about getting up close and personal and beating the other enemy to death with their fists or with crude weapons is quite the accomplishment, and anyone facing Goths in hand-to-hand -hand combat would be greatly advised to get out there quickly. Now the snake bites are the traditionalists among the orc clans who distrust most forms of technology. They're the ones you'll usually see just wielding axes or dealing with any enemy up close and personal rather than holding shooters or driving in vehicles of any kind. Now moving on from the clans, I want to talk about something called the Wa, which is misspelt if it doesn't have three A's and an exclamation mark at the end of it. Now the orcs control a significant part of known space, but these are a collection of thousands of individual territories and empires. They are independent factions and are most likely to fight amongst themselves as opposed to fighting with other species. Occasionally, a particularly powerful warlord will initiate a phenomenon known as the War, which is a mass unification of various tribes and warbands, creating a massive horde that will end up going to the stars and can ravage dozens of planets before it is defeated or disbanded. They are not permanent alliances, however, and usually disband either when they are defeated or run out of enemies to fight. Now, the War is possibly linked to the rather primitive psychic powers of the Orc Brain Boys, and it's possible that it is channeled through the warp, giving the orcs a unified consciousness that they are not aware of. Although, of course, this is merely speculation, and I'll go into more detail about this when I talk about orc psychic powers in the orc videos. Now, as I mentioned previously, orc society is dominated by the strongest individuals, who form the ruling elite of the race. The only exception to this rule are the odd boys, specialist orcs who have an innate talent in a specific field, such as medicine or technology, whose unique skills make them indispensable to their tribe, so they may not be the strongest, they may not be the fastest, or the best at collecting teeth. However, without these specialist orcs, orc society would be stuck on one planet, essentially beating each other into submission. Now, they do have a religion which is surprising for a race who essentially believes just beating the enemy to death is the best way to go. They believe in two gods, Gork, which is the god of cunning brutality, and Mork, the god of brutal cunning. The subtle difference here is that Mork hits you when you aren't looking, and Gork hits you hard when you are. As such, sometimes orcs can't remember which is which, and do tend to fight over it, although I imagine it just is an excuse for them to engage in more combat. Now, the currency of the orcs is very peculiar, as I mentioned earlier, as the orcs use their teeth as currency. It's pronounced teeth, as you would imagine Gollum would pronounce teeth. Now, this is quite a natural solution to inflation and income, as the orcs regrow their teeth in a similar manner to Terran sharks, replacing them quite frequently. They also degrade over time, so it's impossible to hoard them, because you'd end up just hoarding a pile of rotted teeth. Now, the language of the orcs is very basic. It's a very crude, and has many different dialects varying across the galaxy. Of course, whenever you see them in Games Workshop productions, they seem to be speaking Cockney English, but of course, that's not the case, and it's usually a collection of grunts and roars, and a lot of pointing involved. Now, writing is generally beyond the abilities of most greenskins, but they do use a limited range of pictograms and glyphs, amongst other things, including drawing crude maps to indicate to indicate to other orcs certain things such as where items are, where a war boss is on the battlefield, or essentially where to go and kill things next. Now, finally, I want to talk about the orc technology, or technology as it appears ramshackled, scavenged and slapped together, but is as potent as any weapon used by the Imperium. Now, Orc technology is characterised by a constant stream of poorly thought out experimentation, constantly trying to outdo other competition amongst the mech boys. Thus the technology is not uniform, leading to Orc warbands having a motley appearance of badly put together weaponry and armour, which essentially looks like they've scavenged just junk and attached it to old weapons in order to fire them, and attached it to themselves to protect themselves. Often pieces of technology may have been salvaged dozens of times, and by any logical means it should not work. However, the primitive genius of the mech boys and the 
technological power of the war actually keeps the technology working long after it should have failed or even in events when it should never have worked in the first place. The tough and resilient nature of the orcs means they even accept crude bionic enhancements, transplants and other medical advances performed on them with ease and their symbiotic nature means they can regrow a lot of elements of their body even without medical intervention. However you will see a lot of orcs who are of quite high standing having at least one power claw attached to their body. So, this is the summary I wanted to give of the orcs today. They're quite a brutal, primitive and very bizarre race. They are of course based on the orcs from the Tolkien books and from Warhammer fantasy. However, in the Warhammer 40,000 universe they've taken on their own bizarre culture and become quite an interesting faction which you wouldn't have expected to occur in a standard fighting universe where everything has to be very serious. Because for them, war is fun. Even though it's brutal, they are still having fun, and so you can have a bit of fun as an orc player in the game. So that's everything I wanted to mention in the video today. As previously, if you have any suggestions, please leave them in the comments section below. If you'd like to ask me a question, you can send me a personal message, and I will attempt to get through and read them all. Unfortunately, we have built up a backlog. I will answer them as soon as I can. Or you can go to the Vox Relay, which is the Vaults of Terror forum, and on there you can ask any questions you think you need to ask, and of course join the community who is slowly building up over time, which is always nice to see. So that's everything I wanted to mention today. See you next time on the Vaults of Terror.